Good afternoon, Ms. Grono, and welcome to our program. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. There is a Russian saying that goes like, a new brush sweeps differently. But in the case of Uzbekistan, we are seeing the old brush sweep differently. Is that an odd situation in your experience? Is there a precedent for that in world politics when a second in command in government for 13 years makes a sharp turn once becoming a leader? Look, this is, of course, a very uh, big question facing Uzbekistan right now, and uh, indeed one that uh, all those watching the changes uh, in the country are uh, grappling with. I think it's very fair to say, as you indicated, that uh, President Mirzioyev uh, indeed did not only inherit a system of governance built on tight and often brutal control um, and suspicion of change. He indeed had an important part in creating and implementing that system uh, during his time as prime minister. I would, though, say that uh, his first 100 days showed something of a shift, uh, something of an important shift in terms of approaching both domestic, but also regional and wider international issues. Um, now, whether this will constitute a new approach and whether indeed we will see a qualitative shift is the big question. I think that the fact that we are seeing uh, a certain uh, opening and a certain uh, new logic of engagement both with the domestic constituencies uh, and an openness to listen for instance to, to concern but also an openness to uh, Uzbekistan neighbors. I think that is um, a very important positive signal and now it is important that these signals continue and be deepened. Um, of course, uh, as you said, uh, President uh, Mirzioyev built his uh, career in uh, late uh, President uh, Karimov's uh, system and so uh, your reference to the uh, Russian saying is um, indeed a very interesting one. I would say, though, that uh, at this time, of course, Uzbekistan also faces um, important realities which weren't there at the time that uh, President Karimov's system was being entrenched. Um, and I think that it's fair to say that uh, President Mirzioyev is very well aware of the issues that are uh, facing Uzbekistan today, the deep socioeconomic uh, issues, the sort of deep grievances that need addressing uh, and without which um, there uh, indeed uh, would be uh, further grievance. And uh, I think that there is an understanding that perpetuation of the stagnation that characterized uh, the past years in Uzbekistan is uh, not necessarily a way forward for any leader of the country. ICG's latest report on Uzbekistan is much more optimistic than its previous reports, although still careful. Do you think President Mirziyoyev's suggested changes are genuine? What would be indications for that? So, look, I think that your, uh, the key word there is indeed very careful. I think that uh, the first 100 days indicate some very interesting, important shifts in approach. Uh, these, of course, include the uh, you know, sort of wide travel to throughout the regions, the kind of effort to indeed engage with the population. Uh, although, of course, I um, uh, think that population still remains wary to see uh, what is coming out of that engagement. Uh, but I would say also an important focus on uh, indeed rural development issues, socioeconomic issues. And uh, the uh, also releases of uh, some of the political prisoners. I think that that is um, an important start. But again, I would say that uh, much more remains to be done uh, in order to indicate to both Uzbekistan's population, but also the international community, that this is going to be a new trend which will continue in the right direction. So I think that your uh, focus on the word cautious optimism uh, is, uh, is very important. Um, I think that uh, we are seeing this cautious optimism because any shift from the stagnation is, uh, is very welcome and very important, both domestically but also vis-a-vis -vis Uzbekistan's uh, neighbors and uh, sort of in the regional context. Uh, having said that, it is very difficult to 
change the logic of systems uh, that are entrenched. And that, of course, involves navigating a number of uh, very diverse interests, including indeed the interests of elites which had benefited from, uh, from the system. So one of the big difficult challenges will be to, on the one hand, seek to liberalize, uh, for instance, the economy, uh, while at the same time navigating uh, the, the, the you know, way the system has been entrenched. And I think that uh, we are uh, yet to see whether the uh, change will be sustainable. I think that also the first 100 days have shown that indeed uh, the president is consolidating power very strongly in, in, in his uh, uh, new capacity as president. I mean, we've seen some uh, shifts in the elites. We've uh, seen uh, also new appointments in the interior, for instance. And I think all this indicates, of course, that, you know, uh, the, the strength, the consolidated strength in the presidency uh, will continue to be a constant feature. And whether it will be possible to genuinely seek a decentralization of that system, at least to some degree, is a very big question. Speaking of the elite and the uh, power limitations Mirziyoyev has, there are speculations that the president would like to go deeper in his reform, but there is a group of people in the elite who is in favor of doing business as usual and who is stalling the reforms. What do your observations show? Look, I think that uh, in uh, systems as closed uh, as the one in Uzbekistan, uh, it is not uh, uncommon uh, for indeed, um, you know, many in the elites uh, to wish to keep benefiting from uh, that system. And so, though we are seeing precisely some shifts uh, in terms of the new appointments, such as in the, um, in the interior sectors, uh, I think that this will be a very uh, sort of uh, difficult balance to navigate um, and I think that uh, this will precisely, there will be a tension uh, between, on the one hand, uh, seeking to bring some uh, openings and some um, reforms, such as, say, bringing the economy out of the shadows, including bringing the black market economy out of the shadows, but at the same time, uh, ensuring that uh, there is uh, continued stability. So I think, you know, we will see a, a lot of uh, building of uh, alliances uh, around uh, the president. I think that the first uh, few months have shown that he is uh, indeed feeling uh, quite steady uh, in, in terms of charting his course. But of course, you know, the risk in consolidating power in the presidency, again, is that one could come back to the same logic which uh, had precisely led to the uh, entrenchment of the system and which will make it very difficult to bring in a, 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 any kind of genuine liberalization. Despite President Mirziyoyev's assurances that his government will carry on Islam Karimov's legacy, much of what he is doing now would not be welcomed by the late leader. And that means Mirziyoyev does not share many of Karimov's concerns concerns about the security, uh, that's why he wasn't opening up to his neighbors, concerns about economic liberalization. So why do you think so? And what are Mirziyoyev's concerns? Look, I think that uh, the situation today in Uzbekistan shows that, you know, some uh, steps are really needed to address uh, very serious socioeconomic issues, indeed the issues related to grievances that are connected to very heavy-handed top-down governance and indeed a very abusive system of uh, power. I think it's also become uh, very difficult for um, the country to uh, handle, you know, uh, sort of uh, the out-migration, uh, you know, over th nearly three and a half million Uzbeks uh, live in Russia. Uh, this is something that, you know, the country also um, needs to be able to sort of absorb. Uh, I think that this is, a re this is a situation where it is difficult for the government to continue without addressing some of these issues and grievances. And I think that you are, of course, right that the president uh, came to power uh, 
sort of praising the uh, Karimov legacy and indeed, uh, you know, portraying himself uh, uh, as an apprentice to Karimov, as somebody who uh, sees uh, Karimov as a father figure, of course. This is, I think that it would be uh, very difficult for him to, otherwise, to do otherwise. But I think uh, a set, th th he's got a different set of priorities. And those also come out from a recognition that uh, there are genuine issues that will need addressing because of after all Mirziyoyev was tasked uh, under the Karimov regime with uh, sort of monitoring and coordinating uh, issues on the domestic scene so I think he's very uh, familiar with the realities and hence um, uh, I think that it will be uh, his priority to indeed address uh, some of the issues which create the greatest pressure points and this is what I think we're seeing now whether uh, this will go beyond rhetoric is something that we still are to see. Does your organization see a difference between the mentality of the same officials under Karimov and Mirziyoyev? Is the work attitude changing in Uzbekistan? The first uh, few months are too early to indicate whether we will see a systemic change. Uh, now, what we are seeing, though, is uh, quite some pressure put already on the bureaucracy. Uh, we are seeing um, officials who previously had been in the shadows being sort of brought into uh, public discussions much more. We are seeing even uh, public criticisms of officials. We are seeing sort of as, uh, proposals of a system of uh, rewards and uh, punishments for either good practice or mal uh, sort of performance. So I think we are seeing a, a shift, you know, which has the potential to actually speed things up. Whether we will see, you see, for, for me, possibly the biggest challenge uh, to somehow grapple with is whether we will see these officials being able to change this kind of top-down uh, Soviet type uh, uh, control of governance and really even in issues like the rural development for instance which is badly needed and has been recognized as badly needed whether we will see an ability to really let go of this vertical control logic and genuinely decentralize some uh, of the initiatives that in my view will be a very significant test and through that you know you would then ideally uh, see also some genuine space for local representation or for uh, genuine dialogue or indeed um, earlier we talked about this kind of um, uh, sort of invitation by uh, the president uh, for uh, public voices to really share their critical views. Now will that be a safe space for them to do so or will Mirzioyev having um, freed some political prisoners uh, fall for the trap of actually um, going after his own critics. You know, those are still things that I think we uh, will have to uh, see play out in practice. Ms. Grono, thank you for being in our show. We hope to see you again to discuss ICG's future reports on Uzbekistan. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.